before we move on, we're going to look at that function again. Here's the transformation. Here's the isolated x so that we could describe the transformations. But let's look at the transformation, transformation table. Transformation table would look like the following. If you look at and the description, you can see how the description matches the transformation table. There's a horizontal reflection, horizontal stretch, times x, and then you move a left 9 to get the new coordinates. Next one for the y's, we took a vertical reflection, multiplied by vertical compression, this is all multiplied by the y, and then we moved up 4. This here is the transformation table. So we map the basic onto the new transformations to find the new set of coordinates. Let's move on. Note, when transforming functions, the properties change. So, for example, the domain changes when horizontal, such as k and d, a when a horizontal transformation occurs, and the range changes when a vertical transformation, such as a and c, occurs. Now this is important to note because for symmetry, symmetry changes, it because a, for example, a parabola we looked at er, in one point in the previous section, we looked at parabola for symmetry, and we noticed different parabolas will result in different answers. It's important to note that although the basic parabola is even, it doesn't mean all of the parabolas are even because of the transformations. Any discontinuities such as asymptotes will also change depending on the type of transformation that occurs. So very important to note. Now, example number two. Given the ordered pairs, negative 5, 2, 4, 1, negative 3, 7, 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 5, belong to a function f. List the ordered pairs that belong to the following transformation. Now, what this is saying is that if you're given these ordered pairs, so let's assume that these belong to a basic function. You're given these coordinates, and given these coordinates that belong to a random basic function, you're to transform them according to this. What's the first step you need to do? Well, folks, you need to make sure that you list the basic, which are all the coordinates given, and you change that transformation function to ensure that the x has a coefficient of 1. You do that, and then you can actually apply the transformations. So, for the x, we're looking on the inside. So, a flip of this, which is negative 1 half, x, and then we're going to go right 3, so it'll be plus 3. The y's will be just what's on the outside, 3y minus 1. And we apply the the numbers, and we get fractions. I highly urge you to use improper fractions. Unless otherwise noted, just stick with the improper fractions. All right, so this is the transformations that were applied to the ordered pairs, and these are the new set of coordinates that happen to exist. All right, example number three. Given y equals negative 3f at, at 3x plus 3 plus 1, you're asked to determine the transformation table for the cubic root and uh, the exponential function uh, f at x is equal to 2 to the x functions. So these are the three functions that you have to apply to determine the transformation table with this uh, transformation here. You're asked also to state the impact of the transformations on the domain and range, the intervals of increase and decrease, and end behaviors. Finally, you're asked to state the equation of each transformed function, the new equation that you've, you've now transformed. All right, let's determine the first one. You have the first, you have the function, which you have to isolate for x, and then you apply it to the cubic function. So, take your cubic basic, apply the transformations, and 
When you do that, <coughs> you'll notice here that here is the full, full and completed solution. Notice that I changed the coordinates in the table that you normally have for basic. Let's talk about why we did that. Okay, here we are again with the basic of the cubic. Here they are. These are the coordinates. Now, as soon as I apply this one-third, you'll notice that these values will end up being fractions. What happens if you're asked, for example, to graph to find nice points, to find points that are not fractions or decimals? What would you do then? Well, what you would do is you would change the points that result in a fraction and find other points on the cubic that will result in a regular number. Those would be the case of, for example, negative 3 and negative 27, because if I take the one-third of 3, negative 3, I'll end up with a value of negative 1, and negative 9 will be negative 729. We need the matching points on the other side, and you can apply the transformations such that you end up with nice numbers, basically numbers that are graphable. And I know the 1,459 and the 1,457 look ugly, but look at the y value, at the x values. The x values are all nice points. All right. Now, part B says describe the domain and range. In a cubic function, domain, the domain is x belongs to real, or x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range goes from uh, y belongs to real as well, so and negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, how does that apply to the from the original to the new one? Well, they don't change. The domain and range here does not change from the original. Now, it's increasing on the domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, looking here, it's decreasing, sorry, on, the in, on this interval. The reason why it's decreasing and not increasing, let's talk about that a second. Normally, a cubic function is increasing on that interval. All right, normally. But because there is a reflection right here vertically, you change the increasing to decreasing. And then we look at, as x approaches inf negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches, so again, because it's decreasing, as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching positive infinity. So let's look at that again and what happened. Normally, the graph is as follows. This is a normal cubic, the description right there. What happens? is because it's decreasing now, things are changing. It Instead of as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, decreasing means that it will now approach positive infinity. And then again, as x approaches positive infinity, y will approach negative infinity. So those are the changes that were made, all the ones listed here. None here for the domain and range, but definitely on the in decreasing interval and the description of the end behavior. All right, part C. You are asked to rewrite the equation in cubic form. Here it is, okay? And if you were to simplify this, you would find out that the function simplified could be like this, or if you expanded it, it would even be more than this. But the reason I simplified this expression is I took the 3 out, don't forget to cube it, and then I multiplied it to the negative 2. All right, that's the end of the first one, the cubic, and we're going to go to another video to find the next function.